Hello, and welcome to this course on programming with Per. I'm Colin Fay. I'm a data scientist in R hacker. As you can only hear me, here is a picture of me drinking coffee. A big part of my day job is writing R code, and I use Per to help me optimize my workflow. Notably, I use Per for writing functions, which is what you'll do in this course. Before starting this course, make sure you've got some basic knowledge of iteration using Per. If you're not familiar with it, here are some great resources that can help you learn about iteration with Per. If you're already familiar iterating with Per, you can start this course right now. Almost every iteration process has two sides. The first are the elements we iterate over. The second is the function we apply to each element. Per follows this format. The first per function everyone learns is the map function. Map has two elements. First, dot x, which is the object we are iterating over. This object can either be a vector, a list, or a data frame. The second part includes dot f and the dot 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 argument, which represents the functional part of the iteration. It's the description of what happens to each element of the object. In this course, you'll learn how to deal with the second half of a basic per skeleton, the dot f and the dot 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 argument. For this course, I have extracted three lists from a dataset taken from the open data portal of the French city of Saint-Malo. This dataset gathers a count of the number of visits on the website saintmalo.fr. Each of these newly created lists is a year. 2014, 2015, and 2016. It contains 12 sublists corresponding to months. Each month is a vector with a number of website visits per day. These list objects are an extraction of a full dataset. This list format is one you regularly encounter when carrying data on the web, notably when you have to deal with a JSON format, which is passed as a nested list in R. Let's start with a refresher of per basic functions using these three lists. First, let's see the map function. The map function runs the dot f function on each element of dot x and always returns a list. Here, we are mapping the sum function on the list visit underscore 2015. One strength of per is that it is types table. This means that you always know upfront the class of the output. Here, for example, we are using map underscore dbl. Map underscore dbl does the same operation as map, but the output is different. As you can see, the result is a numeric vector rather than a list. Let's now imagine we want to add visits from 2015 and 2016. To do this, I can use the map2 function to get a list, and its counterpart, map2 underscore dbl, to get a vector of numeric. What if we want to do the same computation as the one from the previous slide, but with three lists? In per, there is no map3, map4, etc. If you want to map over more than two elements, you'll need to pass a list of elements to the pmap function. To iterate over elements in three or more lists, you'll need to put all these lists in another list and pass this master list as the first argument of pmap. Now it's your turn to refresh your per memory 